Yo guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're gonna show you the highlights of PSGL Japan, um, the race that was a few days ago. Um, as you can see, we're finished. The first Q1 run that I had was not good enough to pass. At least I didn't think at the time. So decided to go out again for another for another new set of softs, and uh, the lap was and it was very good and was easily through to Q2. Uh, also, sorry if I sound a little bit sick. It's well because I'm sick, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, my my first banker in Q2 was actually one probably one of my best laps of the whole qualifying session. Um, not sure why, but I just really felt like I hooked up the lap very nicely. And as you can see here, we finished with a 0 0.772, which was actually like almost a tenth clear of uh, our our teammate Barry. Um, yeah, as, as Yona said at the, at the end. Barry, you can go out. Yeah, we see, you see we're like a tenth faster. But at the end of the session, uh, I actually finished P5, yeah. which I was very surprised by. Everyone went really quickly that session, because especially Brendan Nicola, with that point so six. Um, yeah, so that was a very good lap by Brendan. Yeah, and as we can right? see, there's Maybe a little bit of a trend shit. between Ferrari and Alfa Romeo being uh, nice at the top of the sessions so far. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, here on to my Q3 banker lap. Uh, it was a relatively good, clean lap all around. Not not too many major mistakes, and I think we we get a, a lap time of a 0.61, yeah, uh, which was actually put us in provisional uh, pole. But then our teammate beats us to the at the line with a 0.53, I think Barry did, and um, and that was us two in the ahead of the two Alfa Romeos, okay. which I think. Let him I did just a little bit slower lap time than me. So it was 1-2 Ferrari, 3-4 Alfa Romeo on the last run. Now it's all to play for. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to show you the whole lap as I think it was a very uh, hooked up lap as well. Maybe my sector 1, I just very struggled with sector 1 for this uh, for this round. Not too sure why. Um, I just could never hook it up. I don't know if it was set up, driving or a bit of both. But turn 1 was pretty good. But here I could just never push the car... As much as I, uh, as much as Barry could, and here I missed the apex a little bit, which cost me, I'd say, thirty, and here as well a little bit. Um, so sector one wasn't too great, barely an improvement on my first lap. Uh, so I think a six nine first, which is still all right. Um, Degner two, clean, a little bit of a moment on the exit, but didn't lose too much time at all. I think uh, the hairpin probably one of the hardest corners to hook up here with the little drift that you need to have, which I kind of get. Um, a small improvement again on my banker. And here, Spoon, very much, very easy this corner actually in this year. I feel like it's there's so much grip, there's so much downforce, downshift to fifth, hold fifth, flat out on the exit, and that's that's about it. And then for the last sector, I, I knew my split wasn't the best, it was a very good split, a two three split. So I wanted to really push the limit uh, for the last sector to maybe snatch pole position, but I still think I was a bit too cautious, I didn't cut perfectly. Um, but the exit was pretty clean nonetheless, and we improved by just over a tenth, which gives us a 0.48, which is actually pretty much my PB. I PB'd in Q1, Q2, and Q3 for this race. I was in a very bad mood before the race started. As you can see here, Barry invalidates his last run, uh, unfortunately, but I was in a very bad mood the whole day because I really couldn't f figure it out why I was so much slower compared to Barry. Um, but in the session, right, I was no so kidding. focused, no common, um, and I managed to pull it off. I'm so sorry. Uh, like a good lap. Yeah, I'm but so Brendan sorry. beats us right at the end of the session with a four-five, which I'm is so a crazy lap. I mean, look at the the lap times. Brendan there was, was we were I think separated Man, by I'm half so a tenth, sorry. or just it's about fine. a little bit more. It's fine. The top four. Yeah, the top four. <laughs> My middle was four eight nine. <laughs> <laughs> Barry talking about his middle sector, yeah, he, he had a very good middle sector, and he was on for maybe a low 4, maybe a high 3, if he did a good last sector, so we definitely have the pace and we showed it, um, we showed it the qualifying, and also my heart rate monitor was stuck on 108 for, for the last round, I'm not sure why, it was definitely a glitch, it would have been way higher than that, <laughs> to be honest. As we skip on to the race start, we decide to start on the soft tire. Uh, med Thomas goes on the mediums, he decides to go on the mediums, soft which is an interesting strategy. Uh, but I think most people around us are on softs. So five red lights. We get an alright start, nothing crazy. Um, I My plan was to 
stay behind Brendan uh, or stay in between the alpha males, basically, as long as I could. As Barry behind us has a little bit of a moment on the exit. Not okure okay. if he because he touched the grass or a little contact with Thomas. This kid never learned. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's third lap one, turn one, things can happen. So here we just get used to the car with the heavy fuel, dirty air. Like it, it, It's very different to how qualifying feels as we have to break for Degner 1, downshift. And, so we're just getting into a rhythm now. This is, what a, this is what's going through my head. Uh, and the plan for this race is obviously to undercut or try to undercut. Uh, I don't think the overcut would have worked or from soft tires at, at least because I know Freddy started on the hards and overcut onto the mediums, I think, which was it's a good strategy. It could work, but not from the soft tires. You, you can't drag out the softs uh, that long. So it was it was either a soft Air hard or a soft medium from now on. And it all depended on my position on and Barry's position and where we felt Thomas at the time. The and Thomas are fast on the yeah, as you can see, I can I noticed straight away that uh, Brendan and Thomas, or the Alfa Romeo's, were very fast on a straight line. Um, I was um, running way higher wings, apparently. Uh, I thought my wings weren't that high, but compared to the Alfa Romeo's, they were. The and straight off the bat, I knew that I had to stay in between them, yeah. because if they got ahead of me, it would be very hard to overtake them both. As here, Thomas actually goes a little bit of an outside move on the last corner. I, I know he wanted to push me, to pass Brendan, but I really didn't want to pass Brendan, so I, here I just really tried to keep on Brendan's slipstream. I don't know why Brendan didn't give Thomas slipstream there, but um, I knew I had to be ahead of Thomas here, so I stay around the outside, and and his mediums at this point are, I think, a little bit quicker than our softs, but we send it down into turn three and keep Thomas the position. Uh, so that was crucial. That was very crucial to, to stay ahead. Uh, but as you can see, the softs in lap five are really you struggling now. You need to be careful now. when they want to go. You need to, not make you need to make sure Thomas is not on your side. Yeah, um, the softs were struggling lap five. They hit the drop off. The mediums didn't yet. Um, so as you can, Thomas was following me, basically a tenth behind me. The tires are going to be out uh, now. So I knew he was going to go for a move. Um, but I wanted to keep the outside here a little bit because I knew I, had, I was going to have a better exit. But actually, there was no okay. grip. I don't know if I had the marbles or a little bit. There, because you have marbles. Yeah, so I tell Barry straight away that you don't want to be on the outside of the hairpin because I, I just had no grip. So I, I lose the position to Thomas. I was like, okay, well, let's just see how... His mediums I'm going to stay behind him for a lap uh, or two and see how it goes. Um, the, there was no point okay, fighting now. It's lap five. Push you need ERS. to save your tires, save your ERS. Plus you one. don't win a race in the first stint, so... We skip on to the next lap, the end of next lap, and here I notice I'm getting close to the top two, and I decide, okay, maybe I can go for a move and uh, get in between the Alfa Romeos once again, as I force Brendan to go defensive on Thomas, uh, defensive on me and attacking on Thomas, and causes to have a he bad exit ERS, of the 60. last sector, Thomas and I push right? all my ERS here to get past Thomas, because I knew it was crucial. Kind of a through goes Nicholas here moment, <laughs> but yeah, around the outside we, take, we get the move. Um, Job, and we're again in the okay. middle, in between the, the Alfa Romeo sandwich, which even more important than before. This is, we're about to reach the pit stop phases. I do not want Alfa Romeo to be one and two, especially Thomas with the mediums. If he's Brandon leading 50. and pulls away, it's, Mario, he becomes very, very dangerous for the, for the yeah. end of the race. Yeah. Uh, so that was the most important. I, I also tried to help Barry to get past yes, them as well, but it was... Impossible. They, their straight line speed was just Better way quicker than us. So we were just debating what, what to do for the strategy. And I think like Barry, we're going to skip on to lap 9. Yeah, end of lap 9. This is where Nico, Barry pits. Barry so uh, the strategy here was Barry undercut on hearts. Uh, so he undercuts all of us. And I overtake Brendan and lead the train. On speed. Um, and just control the pace for one lap. As you can see, I get past them. I use a little bit of my ERS. You don't wanna, I don't want to use too much um, because uh, after the pits, and also the, you want to have the most ERS yeah. uh, yes. you can possibly have. And especially don't around this track, you can't really... Yes, yeah. Barry tells me to not push because you need ERS, to control the pace. Um, in this track, it's really hard to save ERS. Um, Careful, I don't think it's... Extra, it's not impossible, so but don't. I think if you don't use ERS at all in one lap, you, I may recharge one or two, just a few percentage of ERS, so very little. So it was very important to hold um, as much ERS as you could. 
Uh, so I think I, I, I do end up pushing a little bit. Oh, sorry about the sound. Uh, I end up pushing a little bit because I didn't want Brendan to overtake me before I pitted because yeah. my strategy was to pit this Any lap want, and be zero. right behind Barry yeah. uh, and be 1-2 because if we are 1-2 then we could have controlled we could control the whole race. Yeah, you need to push a bit, Nico. And um, so we could, nobody so could get us pa Jarno. could get past us very easily. Uh, so here I'm pushing again a little bit, making sure. Brendan is weaving. Not sure if he's trying to say that he's not going to go for the move or, uh, or what. <laughs> I just didn't want to risk it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't go for the move. Bit of a slide. Yeah, the tires are basically dead at this point. Lap ten, the softs are just done. So we go into the pits. And we go onto the mediums. So it's very interesting to see where Barry and Yarno, because Yarno also pitted behind Barry, Yarno copying Barry's hey, strategy, need to make sure uh, where they come out, Barry, or where I come out compared to them. Uh, I knew it was going to be close because the undercut is always, always powerful in this game. Um, oh, even in like one that. lap undercut, even yeah, if you go from soft to much, hards, and much, the hards take a while to Yarno's warm up. It doesn't matter. There's still a 1.5, two-second undercut even. So as you can see, I'm lifting a little bit here, which I don't know if it was a mistake, and both of them get past me. I think this was one of the one of the few mistakes I did this race. Brandon Hartz. Um, if I didn't lift, I could have maybe been side by side with Barry and Yarno, and we could have defended them together. Um, but I was at, at the time I was just scared that I was going to get hit, or I didn't want to cause drama or damage. So on to the next lap, I obviously, on my fresh mediums, uh, I'm much quicker than these two, so I decide right, to use my ERS to get past no both of them. Um, 50. With the no best, good. like, the better scenario would have been that I get All past right. Yarno only, but obviously Yarno had to overtake Barry, uh, otherwise he would have been P3 well, and his race would have been way, way more complicated. Especially to save having to pass two teammates together, as we know that's the hardest, that was gonna happen anyway, the hardest thing about league these. racing, actually. As we saw in Alfa, Alfa Romeo's in Qatar, when they were 1-2 and they just so completely cars, controlled the whole race. So, <laughs> here, I don't know why people, so many people went on hards when they pitted even one lap after me, Barry, or the same lap as me. Because I knew mediums ERS. could go to the end, e even though they barely uh, would go to the end, they still made them, and the mediums would have been quicker throughout the stint. Maybe only the last few laps, would, they would have been a little bit slower than the hearts, but I didn't see much use or much reason to go on uh, on hearts from my point of view. Um, especially, and also I felt really comfortable with the mediums more than the hearts in practice, so I was I was very comfortable with going on the mediums. I think some people thought I made a mistake on the pits or the game gave me the wrong tires or something like that. No, I just, I, I, I preferred mediums. Um, here we set up our move on Yarno because we want to get past him as soon as possible and utilize clean air to basically just maintain the pace, control the train. Um, my plan was not and to push, it was not to overtake Yarno and just... I did tell Barry to save VRS, but I think that was also another mistake. Barry should have no, tried to overtake Yarno here indeed. with me, but yeah, um, it, it didn't happen. Uh, so here we, yeah, I didn't want to push, because I knew it was going to be really hard to make it to the end. Um, the mediums would have reached 70% or just about more. Uh, so I had to save tires like crazy. Um, I didn't push almost at all, I was just managing the gap, didn't touch the ERS. As you can see here, every lap was about 5, 6 tenths to Yarno behind me. Um, very consistent lap times as well, I really felt like Kind of like Seven. a robot <laughs> in, in this race. I was very comfortable. Job, Barry. Um, always five He's tenths behind me. He, he could never attack unless he had to use the ERS. So that was good. Here on lap 18, I noticed, okay, I'm, I'm eight tenths out of Yarno. Oh, I'm going to try and break yes, the know, DRS. Because it's, it's for them, it's that would have been race, amazing for Barry because yeah. that means that Barry can overtake Yarno, Yarno for free. No, Nico's gonna push now. So yeah, this lap, I start pushing on the tires. Uh, go way or more on the limit on the grip uh, on the curbs uh, and i use a lot of my ers to try and push out of the one second gap but i know yarno has a little bit less ers um, so i i knew that if i pushed at some point i would break out of the drs of, of yarno so here we are at eight and a half tenths after sector one nine reaching nine tenths we have a uh, all right uh, all right degners i guess 
But here in the hairpin, I make a little mistake. Not being used to the speed I carried, I miss the apex, go deep, and I lose pff, more than half a tenth, which was huge, huge. Because as you can Brendan see here, I'm on nine and a half tenths gap, so close to the one second, uh, to the one second gap. But at some, but then I see Barry struggling to keep up, and I did not want to have Barry without the DRS. So I stop pushing, I completely stop pushing the ERS, I want to save my ERS for the second stint uh, and keep Barry in the DRS, because if Barry wasn't in the DRS zone, uh, he was going to get absolutely destroyed by the Alpha Males, so that was the right call, I think. That was definitely yeah, the right call, and also Yarno Stop pushing. was no, Yarno. no slow, like, not slow by... No, not you, not you, not you. <laughs> As there's a little bit of heated moments between Yona and Barry, yeah, Barry a bit of miscommunication, but... Yeah, Yarno was not slow at all, so I, it was very hard okay. to pull away from the DRS, even on mediums. But here, as we get towards the end the of the race, at the last few laps, uh, you see Yarno slowly getting closer and closer. And that is due to the fact Almost, that no, my Yarno mediums are getting me. worse and worse compared to oh, those hard Yarno? tires. Are you sure? Um, they, they were really starting to struggle. Yeah, and okay. there was rain forecasted at the end as well, which was interesting. <laughs> we uh, didn't know what to expect from the rain, uh, if we came earlier or later. And here, lap 24, there's a little moment behind us with Barry and Thomas going side by side and having contact. And uh, there was chaos. Uh, not sure what exactly what games, happened. Yeah. Um, but Bre Barry managed to keep P3 somehow. Brendan got past, Freddy got past. And Freddy here is actually a big okay, you gotta push a bit now. danger because he's on five laps fresher I'm mediums pushing. Pushing than us. But everything. the fact that he had no ERS made it way uh, easier on us to defend from him. So he was a danger for a little bit, but at the end, he, didn't, he just didn't quite have enough ERS and time to get past all of us. And here I st I'm starting to push. Um, I've decided to stay ahead. To keep the, the clean air for the last lap, I did not want to be second because I felt comfortable in clean air. Yeah, I felt yeah. comfortable with my pace. And the tires were really starting to die though. That was a big problem. So I really had to focus here on getting a good exit, getting a perfect cut onto the chicane. And we have 65% of ERS to play with. Yeah, so we used nothing. all of it down the main straight. But I knew Yarn was still going to make it side by side with me because of the DRS and the slipstream is so powerful Barry, as he actually gets finish. up alongside and almost ahead of me. But I keep the inside line, he gets a little bit of marbles, tiny contact, and I think due to the marbles, he, had, he, he didn't have the grip I had and I could keep the lead of the race, but it is not over yet because, as we know, the last back straight is very, very long, and his tires are way better than mine, and on top of all of that, it started to rain, so the grip was getting even less uh, than it already was. I think I say it here, it starts to rain, um, and I, you could definitely feel it, especially on the exit. Like here, Yarno got really? so close to me, almost touching me, uh, and I just had to use the ERS as perfectly as I could. And we are on 160 heart rate, like, I was nervous, obviously. Um, so here I have to get a super nice exit off Spoon, but we actually miss the Apex a bit, I have a little snap. We're, I think that was due to the rain, honestly, the less grip we had, and we have a three tenths margin behind me. Like We're using all of our ERS on the straight. Yarno's using all of his, but he has a slipstream. He gets close, but not close enough for the move. Um, I did break very late, uh, and he, and then he just saw that he could Fucking maybe, Thomas if he went <laughs> too deep, he was not gonna make it. So actually, we win our high first high race high in high high PSGL, high and. High uh, that was honestly a crazy race. He is so dumb. Barry, 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 <laughs> Barry has a little moment. But in the heat of the moment, I understand. He was he was annoyed after what happened. But. So yeah, that was PSGL Japan. My Finally, first win in PSGL. PSGL Still win. crazy to think. We broke the curse. We broke the curse, yes. So I'm super happy and I will see you guys all in the next race in Imola. Ciao, guys.